Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to review this accessory that will enable you to connect an HDMI source to the Ishin EV100. Actually it works with any product that supports AV in and doesn't have an HDMI input. So if you have other goggles from Skyzone for example that doesn't have any HDMI input, this accessory is going to work for you as well. Inside the box we're getting the adapter. And also a mini USB cable that enables you to power up the device. There are two versions, one that comes like that and the other one comes also with this cable that will enable you to connect a 3.5 mm jack to these banana plugs. This is not the exact cable that is included with the other version and this is the cable that I've got with my Fetcher goggles. This device is relatively cheap, it costs about $10 for the version without the cable, but if you don't have a spare cable I recommend to get the one with the included cables because these cables are not so easy to find. On the right side you can find the output which has a video out, left and right audio out. Over here we have the NTSC and PAL switch, the USB power, it doesn't have any built-in battery so this device is going to be needed to be connected to a power source in order to power it up and the input is a standard HDMI input port. The device itself is pretty small, it can fit in the palm of your hands and the main usage is to use it with simulators because probably you don't want to watch movies in these goggles because it's too small but if you want to get a more realistic feel out of your flight simulator it is advisable to use these goggles instead of using the standard TV or computer screen because it will deliver a more FPV like experience and it will enable you to practice FPV better. So in order to use it, first of course you have to power up the device. There is no LED indicator that will tell you the device is on, but now it's on. Then power your goggles. By the way, you can't use this device in conjunction with your DVR model in case you're wondering without further modificating these goggles because it uses the video in port that also double acts as the video out port. So you can either use this device or the DVR model. Then plug the 3.5 mm jack to the port over here and connect these ends to the output connectors. By long pressing this button over here for about three seconds, it will switch into video in mode. And now we can see, we see these colors inside because there is no HDMI source that is connected to device over here. By the way, if we are going to unplug the USB port, you can see that now we don't get any picture. So powering it up is mandatory and you can't use it without any power source. Now we can see that the rainbow picture is being displayed again inside the goggles. Finally, you need to connect the HDMI source. Now the other end of this cable is connected to my computer. And there you go, you can see that now we are seeing the picture of my computer inside the goggles and we can use it for practicing FPV simulators. The picture quality itself is surprisingly good and it's probably because the picture is very very small and it's one of the things I've discussed in my overview of these goggles and many users have been complaining about. But on the other end, if you would like to experience the realistic feel when you actually using the goggles, it will be a good solution for you. Because if you're going to fly it on a big screen and then go out and use these goggles, the feel is not going to be the same. So I think that if you do have the EV100 goggles and use flight simulators, this device is going to be very useful for you. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, this device is not only compatible with the Ishin EV100, so if you have any other goggles, you might find this device useful as well. Actually, I think that Ishin just rebranded this device and put their sticker, so it's been in the market for a long time. But because the EV100 is lacking an HDMI input, they thought it's going to be good to rebrand it under their name and market it specially for the EV100. I think $10 is a good price for this device. I've searched the equivalent and I found that it cost about $15 or so. So $10 is a good price for the package without the AV cable. But of course, if you want the cable, you will need to add another 3 dollars or so. And it's still a good deal in my opinion. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about this device, feel free to ask it in the comment section below. And I'll see you on my next videos. Goodbye.